Hi guys, so in today's lesson, let's talk about something new apart from other topics that we have discussed in this channel. Yes, I want you to see this particular GIF. People who are fans of Oscars might clearly remember this scene. Yes, it's Will Smith slapping the presenter because the presenter has said something that offended his wife. So, we have seen so many instances of celebrities lashing out at people and it makes us think that emotions are actually irrational, it makes us stupid, right? And it doesn't only happen with celebrities, it can also happen to us. There might be some instances where we overreact to some situations or sometimes we underreact to some situations. Let's for, take for example, you have scored low marks in your college exams. How would you feel? Some of us might be chill, totally unreacting to that particular situation and some of us might even overreact saying uh, you have scored low marks in your college exams. So, there are actually not an equilibrium when we are expressing our emotions and it makes us think that emotions make us stupid, emotion make us feel very illogical and it's very irrational, right? But it's not true. Psychologically, emotions are more than just f designed for making you feel stupid. Emotions can give you energy to achieve your goals, emotions can make you strive to become a better human, emotions can even make you human. So now we are going to talk totally about emotions because emotions are the human aspect of humanity. Okay, as usual let's move with the scenario. Imagine you are walking alone at night, there is no one in your road, you are just walking alone going towards your home. So you hear a random set of footsteps behind you. You feel like somebody is walking at the back of you. How would you feel and how would your emotions would be? Let me say your feelings would be fear. You might experience fear and you also have this expressive behavior saying uh, you might move faster, okay? You might go under some light shade you will feel some, you know, you will feel a lot of happiness when you see someone accompanying in the road, feeling, okay, I am not in this alone, I have someone to tackle this. Mm -hmm. And your physiological reactions would be like your heart rate will be rising, your sweat glands will be trembling and even your temperature might start to rise. And also your thoughts, your thoughts will be running wild at the moment. Your thoughts will be thinking, okay, is it a man behind me? Is it a dog behind me? If that's a man, is it a stalker? Should you look back or not? Or should you just sprint and run? So your thoughts, your behaviors and even your inner body functions are affected by your emotions. That concludes us to this particular thing. Thoughts, feelings and behavior are totally interrelated to one another. On the basis of this fact, you might get this question, okay, is it because we think too much, does it reflect in your emotions or it because you emotionally experience things first and then comes your thoughts. The same with the behavioral equation, uh, you behaving in some way, is it affecting your feelings or you feeling something, does it affect your behavior? It is just like the chicken egg problem, does the chicken come first or the egg come first? So, if we delve right into this triangle, it's like a Bermuda triangle because it's messy, but knowing about emotions psychologically might help you figure that out. So, today's topic is going to be about emotions, the basic psychological process that makes us ultimately human and I'm Pooja Shri, Assistant Professor, Department of Psychology. Okay, let's move right into it. As usual, we'll first see the definition of emotion. So as displayed on the screen, emotion is the feeling aspect of consciousness. Consciousness is unified as William James rightly pointed out, consciousness is like a stream. So in the consciousness stream, it is the feeling aspect of whatever we are experiencing in life and it's characterized by certain physical arousal and a certain behavior that reveals that emotion and the inner awareness of feelings. I know these terms can make you feel like you don't understand things. But let me simplify it to you very clearly. The first underlying statement here, the physical arousal is your inner body functions. Okay. The second component of emotion is certain behavior that reveals the emotion to the outside world, which is nothing but your behavior that conveys that you're feeling this emotion. 
and the third aspect is that your inner awareness of your feelings which is your thoughts so as you see you have your physiological body you have your behavioral aspect and you have your thinking aspect so thinking behavior feeling the triangle that we were talking about so that these are the three major components of emotion that makes up emotional process as a basic psychological one moving on yes we are going to see component by component one by one so the first component is called physiological component so I want you to close your eyes for a second and imagine whatever I am trying to tell ok close your eyes don't open them ok imagine you are being extremely happy imagine one of the happiest memories of your life try imagining it try living the moment experiencing it for me those emotions can actually when you close your eyes and when you look in look yourself in the mirror you can see how the your emotional experiences from the past can actually reflect in your face so i want you to imagine your happiest moment for a while yes now i want you to shift your emotions try remembering something that really made you anxious something that's really made you terrified one scary memory you can think of try thinking of that okay concentrate think of that yes we'll move on to the next emotion try something that made you really cry one sad memory that you will never forget in your life yes try imagining it process it what happens in your thinking what happens in your behavior your feelings try imagining those yes okay if you want more time to imagine things you can pause the video and then imagine but for time being we'll move on so once you've experienced all of the things you might notice that if you pay attention to your physiological constructs while you are imagining if you pay your attention to your inner body you can actually feel the same physiological constructs and all the three emotions I've mentioned happiness I've mentioned fear I've mentioned what else I've mentioned sadness yes so in all the three emotions you can feel similar physiological constructs okay for example when you were imagining all the three emotions you can feel the same heartbeat rise okay your heartbeat rise when you are feeling fear emotion when you're feeling happy emotion when you're feeling sad emotion so does that mean same physiological arousal exists with all the different emotions and let me pause you for a moment there are five basic emotions which you already know what are they happiness sadness fear disgust and anger to be very you know to make it clear to you yes so all these five emotion does it have the same physiological construct the answer is simply no but the answer is not totally yes okay it is a bit messy so let me explain it to you one by one so there are three physiological indicators that is researched by the psychological researchers and it's brought to you so you can see there is heart rate okay and there is blood pressure you clearly know what blood pressure is and there is skin conductance skin conductance is the amount of electricity through that is happening in your skin due to some emotional you know responses that you make so these are the three physiological constructs researched by the psychology researchers so with this constructs what researchers have found is that these three constructs differ with all the different emotions okay for example your happy emotions your fear emotions and your anger emotions what happens is that your heartbeat will rise but not in the disgust emotion whereas your blood pressure okay bp you 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 hear people saying no don't raise my bp and you're absolutely right it's the anger emotion people are talking about so when you're talking about anger emotion it is more of the blood pressure rather than heart rate so there are combinations of physiological indicators that actually relate to your different uh, emotional expressions so that is that and when we are talking about physiological arousal of emotions we can never leave out this iconic research by lee dukes so what he found is that there is certain part in the brain that is responsible for emotions like there is a hub of emotions in our brain this little thing you see 
Yes, that's amygdala, okay. It's a part of limbic system. The whole uh, curvy, curvy like thing, this whole thing is amygdala, no, limbic system. And that small P-shaped thing, okay, it is called an almond shaped brain area. So, that is amygdala. Amygdala is responsible for your emotional control. And an interesting fact is that in uh, near to the amygdala, you have some other structure called hippocampus, okay. And as you might recall, hippocampus is actually responsible for your memory aspects. So, why is hippocampus and amygdala so close together? It is because if you kind of imagine your memories, most of them would be episodic. And when your memory is episodic, there is always an emotional touch to all your memories. It is like an MSG that you add to make your food delicious. So, in order to make your memory more memorable, emotions will be actually present. That is why hippocampus and amygdala are anatomically located close to each other. Just a fun fact. Yes, the second component is the expressive behavior. So, if you are feeling some emotions, you kind of show it in your face, right? Okay. Let's do an, a small activity again, okay? What do you think is the first person? What do, what do you think is emotion is conveying? Anger. Yes. What do you think is the second person is conveying? This guy? Yes, it's fear emotion. The third person? Disgusting emotion. The fourth person is actually happy, seems happy. The fifth person seems a bit surprised and the sixth person seems sad. I know all of you might get all the answers right. How can you get those right? Okay. In expressing behaviors, there are several constructs that involves so that you can actually easily identify what the emotion they are talking about. Yes, I am talking about the facial expression. Okay. In each emotion that you deliver, your non-verbal cues that you don't even notice actually plays a role. Yes? Yes. But if you show the same picture to a foreigner, or if you show the same picture to, you know, an African or an American or an Australian, okay, they will also get the answers right. So, does it mean there are certain emotions that are actually common to all the cultures? You are absolutely right. So, these six basic primary emotions are very common across the globe. So, no matter where you are from, no matter you are Tamilian, you are Indian or you might belong to some other continent, some other state, you are capable of you are capable of getting the answers right so emotions are culturally indicated also that doesn't mean all the emotions are noticeable by all the culture people okay in our culture we don't actually induce people to you know express emotions we actually make them control emotions a lot so we might not show our sad emotions out a lot we might not show our, uh, you know, happy emotions a lot too. Some, you know, there is a saying in our particular region that when you are happy for a lot period of time, you feel anxious that your happiness is going to disappear, right? So, there are also cultural constructs of expression of behavior and they advise you to not express certain behavior at a certain place or to express certain behavior at a certain place. So, third component is subjective experience, which is nothing but your thoughts. So, what our thinking does is that, okay, you are experiencing something physiologically, okay, your heartbeat is racing, your skin conductance is racing and you are expressing a certain behavior through your facial expression. So, what happens is that your brain will think, okay, this is the emotion I am facing. So, what your brain does is that your brain categorizes your physiological arousal and your behavior that you are experiencing into one particular emotion. So, that what is happens subjective experience we were talking about. So, you are feeling certain physiological arousal and you are feeling certain you are expressing certain behaviors to convey the emotion. So, what your brain does is your brain categorizes the physiological constructs and your behavior and it labels it as a particular emotion. So, that is why this labeling symbol is given here. So, that is how your thinking is involved also involved in your emotional express, emotional experience. So, as you might already be familiar with this, when we are talking about certain psychological construct, we are going to talk about the theories that determine how it works in real life. So, there are theories and there are actually three forerunning theories that are responsible for the development of emotion as a psychological construct. So, the first iconic theory is given by these two, James and Langnay's theory. 
So, let us see with an example. So, this is the example I want you to imagine for all the three theories so that you can follow with me. So, you see a dog shouting at you, okay, a scary dog, okay, not a puppy dog, it is a scary dog. So, you see that dog shouting at you, so you are experiencing a fear emotion that this is the scenario that I want you to keep in mind when you are dealing with these theories, yes. So, what James and Lagne is saying, okay, when you see some emotional stimulus, right now our emotional stimulus is this dog, right, yes. So, when you see a dog, the first thing that happens is your physiological arousal. So, we have three, we have seen three components of emotions, okay. I want you to recall physiological arousal and expressive behaviors and then subjective experiences which is our thoughts. So, out of all the three components, the first component to elicit uh, for this particular you know emotional uh, stimulus is our physiological arousal. So, what happens is that James Langney says when you see a scary dog, the first thing that happens is you start sweating, your nervous system starts reacting. So, your physiology responds first and then you go forward to experience fear emotion. So, the chicken egg problem, James Langney's solution to the chicken egg problem is that physiology component comes first and then comes the psychological experience of fear, okay. For you to easily remember, you can actually look into this particular picture. So, there is an emotional stimulus and there will be a physical reaction and then only there will be an emotional expression. So, James Langney simply puts that emotional stimulus and then we have your physiology reacting to that stimulus and then you have your emotional experience next, okay. There is another theorist who goes like this, okay. When you see a scary dog, okay, you won't actually first experience physiological arousal. Instead, what you do is that, that information goes to your brain, okay. There is some region in the brain called thalamus where sensory inputs are being received and then it is being channelized to all the cortex areas. So, what we do is that when you see some dog staring at you or shouting at you, that particular emotional stimulus, your eyes and your ears, okay, they convey that information to the thalamus and it goes to the brain. From the brain, both physiological arousal and psychological experience happens simultaneously is what Canon Bard is saying. So, there is no hierarchy that physiological thing comes first and then psychological emotion comes next. There is no such hierarchy here, okay. It goes straight to the brain and then both physiological and psychological experience of emotion happens simultaneously is what Canon Bard is coming to tell you, okay. To easily remember, remember this particular flowchart, okay. So, you see an emotionally arousing stimulus. So, there is conscious expression of like conscious experience of emotion and your physiological changes happening simultaneously. There is no hierarchy here, both happens equally and simultaneously so that we experience an emotional expression, okay. Yes. Let us move on to the third theory called two-factor theory. It is also called singer sasters theory. So, in this theory what he is coming to tell is this is quite interesting, okay. When you see an emotional stimulus, okay, first what happens is that your physiological arousal will happen, okay, and then that physiological arousal will be uh, exhibited in your face, your facial expression will exhibit what you are physiologically undergoing. So, there is some ANS reaction and then there is this facial expression. So, your facial expression just happens without you noticing consciously and then what your brain does is, okay, there is this facial expression in this human's uh, face. So, this might be the emotion that she or he might be experiencing. So, cognitive evaluation of emotions happen with your facial feedback, okay. Let me repeat it once again, okay. When you see an emotional stimulus, you see a dog standing in front of you. What happens is you get physiologically aroused, okay. Your autonomic nervous system will be aroused at an instant. So, instantaneously like your physiological arousal, your face, your facial expression also changes, right. So, you get that fear emotion in your face. So, what happens is when your facial expression is turned, your brain at the last, okay, concludes that, okay, there is this physiological arousal and there is this emotional expression in my face. So, I might be experiencing this particular emotion 
Yes, this is called two factor theory. Because this two factor theory is based on our facial feedback, it is also called facial feedback theory. As usual, you can use this particular picture to actually you know easily remember things. So, there is autonomic, I am sorry, autonomic nervous system arousal, physiological arousal happening on one side and there is this elicited facial feedback on the other and this elicited facial feedback will again convey what emotions we are thinking by undergoing cognitive evaluations, okay. So, these are the three theories of emotion. So, we are at the end of this session. So, ending this note, I conclude with a quote, okay, yes. Feelings are something that you have, not something you are. So, this quote was actually quite interesting to me because sometimes we tend to judge people or characterize people based on their emotional expression, okay. Sometimes we call someone very reckless because they just emotionally involve at things, okay. They might shout at people or they might get scared for little things like lizards and frogs. I get scared quite a bit. So, there are some emotional expressions we all experience, but our emotions do not define us, okay. We are human beings with particular self-identity and emotions is the way in which we react to the environment, not because of the way who we are. So, I want you to consciously remember this and thank you for coming to the lecture. Thank you.